Coming up next, it's Sessions at West 54th, the music performance and interview series hosted by David Byrne. Tonight on Sessions, the unique voice and sensibility of Vic Chestnut, backed by Lamb Chop, the avant-garde ensemble from Nashville, and Lucinda Williams brings the faces and places of her highly acclaimed new album to vivid life. All this, plus interviews, up next on Sessions at West 54th. Singer and songwriter Vic Chestnut, whose funny and moving songs have been covered by artists ranging from Madonna to Smashing Pumpkins and Lamb Chop. Described as Nashville's most screwed up country band, they're more like a dreamy, soulful orchestra. It's a match made in some kind of heaven. Please welcome Vic Chestnut and Lamb Chop. societal hassles and I know what they say but I ain't made of clay for the maidens on the holiday yeah the maid I'm nothing but she of a rust Ain't never been but nothing nasty between us She knows where she stands ahead
must have been The one a history stupid as been Everything was perfect in my head Until the end Started Try 
trudging through the ways of people till his heart is cluttered and feeble. But if you take him out of his league, he may be very Till he beats the stampede for the duty free. He's using up all that old currency. He's using up all that old currency. He's using up all. try kick my ass um, garbage recorded it on that record sweet relief record and I love their version and I love Shirley she's so sweet
First song you ever wrote, I, I read this, of course. I didn't know this <laughs> prior. First song that you wrote was called God. You wrote it when you were about five. Right. Um, I'm not going to ask about the song. I'm going to ask, uh, I got to ask about what gave you the idea at five years old that you could write a song? Well, see, that's the thing. See, I'm a very lucky person in that my granddaddy wrote songs and my grandma wrote lyrics. For country songs. Did they work together? or They did apart? work some together. Mainly she wrote lyrics in her notebook. She didn't give them to anybody really. But she liked to write songs about cities. I don't know why. Really? She like, would like write Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, here's a song about Jacksonville. Waycross, Georgia. Here's a song about Waycross, Georgia. And has she been to all those places or she just imagined it? Oh no, it's the only places she'd been to I think. <laughs> she didn't write like, you know, Parish French, <laughs> you know, as well, they dance around with no pants or anything. No, it was, you know, places she'd been to. And my grandfather wrote songs every year for her for their anniversary. So um, from an early age, I knew that people sat around and made up songs. It wasn't some kind of weird hocus pocus to it. I read somewhere that someone said that all, all masterpieces are produced not in a state of concentration, but in a state of distraction. Does that make any sense? That's, that's, I think there's a lot of truth in that. Somebody who uh, wrote that must have done a masterpiece of their own or something because it's true, I think. Um, for me, my personal, you know, masterpieces, a lot of times are, are kind of, you know, blindside me, I think. Well, I am distracted, uh -huh. like doodling with life. I think that's what they meant. They meant either distracted in that the person had other things going on in their life and while they weren't thinking about it too much, they wrote a song or made a movie or whatever and that was the one that was great as opposed to the one where they focused on it all the time and didn't let anything distract them. Um, I, I, uh, I always put too much paint on there. If I, <laughs> if I, uh, you know, and give it half a chance, I will ruin it. You know, that's why I think the, the good ones are the ones that get snatched away from me before I can ruin it. A lot of what, what you write about is ordinary things and, and there's naming names and naming the, the objects and the, it's almost like a, at the time of day, what was sitting on the table, what was outside the window, as opposed to uh, spectacular events, which kind of rarely occur. Right. Um, do you think that salvation is in the, in, in the ordinary as opposed to the extraordinary? Well, I think if you can... I think, I'm throwing the big ones there. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love this. I love this. Well, I think, I think it's my job in a way, kind of. Um, I didn't think about this at first, but I think it is my job to call attention to the littles mm -hmm. and to try to show the power that maybe this set. See, that, I think of it a lot of times as little sets, you know, like, um, you know, like a... Um, 
you know, little groupings, uh, lists, mm -hmm. and somehow together these have a power. And uh, the image of these things together somehow have a greater weight than the separate little bits uh, separate. You know, I think a lot of times this is what I do and try to and try to do, and I want to remind people to look around for the inspiration and and the and the art feeling. You mm -hmm. know, in every day, I think it's kind of what I I do. about their savior and the grassroots effort to incorporate Alexei smiling just as far as he can see but he will stop staring when he's older New Town Check out the session's website. The address is here on your screen. 